Hello everybody, uh, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Uh, leaving the office, headed to the gym. Um, got a real long day today. Uh, have an interview and discussion on childhood trauma, which includes uh, abuse, physical abuse, neglect, sexual abuse, incest, and the long-term impact uh, it has on children and how it specifically impacts the black race. Uh, so that's going to be tonight at, I believe, 8 Central. At least I think it's 8 Central. I got to get back and check my calendar. Uh, they sent me all that. But I'll be speaking on that. They're actually using uh, the uh, information pulled from Born in Captivity, which is my 19th book, uh, Born in Captivity, Psychopathology as a Legacy of Slavery. And so I'll be speaking with them on that tonight. Um, so I probably won't finish my work day until probably nine o'clock, nine o'clock my time at best. Uh, but anyway, look, I've been talking about what we need when it comes to our men. Uh, I've been talking about the importance of properly socializing black men uh, as we have pushed uh, um, with little progress towards uh, a goal for the fundraiser. But let's talk about something uh, again that I think we need to address as it pertains primarily to our men, but I have seen some women out there uh, doing the same thing. So I'm just going to take some time to address this and hopefully make a point uh, that causes us to really truly think. I think that one of the problems that we have as a people is we so easily throw our people away because of who they are, what they are, what they've done, which is something that doesn't necessarily happen in other groups. You can take uh, a white person who could have been strung out on drugs, doing everything under the sun, and ends up getting killed because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nobody in that community is going to sit up and say, well, he got what he deserved. Or nobody's going to say he shouldn't have been there if he wasn't in a place that he shouldn't have been. Um, maybe he'll think about it, but, you know, maybe, you know, he should have did this. Or, the bottom line is, that person was killed by someone that didn't have a right to kill. I'm not talking about somebody gets killed robbing somebody or stealing from somebody or what, or harming somebody. I'm talking about somebody that's probably not making the best decisions at the time, but didn't do anything to deserve being killed. Um, and specifically, I see it all the time. It's not new. It almost happens so uh, naturally that you expect it, but that's just that we shouldn't expect it from our people. We shouldn't expect it. You know, we expect comments and racist comments about uh, our people when they are killed and it becomes public knowledge that uh, one of our people were killed. You know, to have white people show up and say that animal got what he deserved or uh, that thug and, you know, whatever it is, you expect that. You know, you train yourself to sit up and worry about things you can't control because you can't go chase every, each and every person that does that down and handle them like you really want to. So you, you learn to deal. But where you should not be getting that type of energy from is from your own people. Look, I have a standard of behavior. I have a standard of behavior for myself. I have a standard of behavior that I expect my wife to stand up and live up to. Uh, and she's my wife because she did that. Uh, I have a standard of behavior that I hold my, my, my children to. Uh, I have a standard of behavior that I hold my associates, my friends, and those people in my circle to. Not everybody can live up to that standard, and I understand that. And that simply means that they cannot be a part of my immediate circle. It does not mean that I will disrespect them, I will wish them harm, or I will uh, uh, diminish the gravity of something done wrong to them because they don't live the way I think people should live. Um, or they make a one-off decision or a two-off decision that ends up 
and putting them in a bad situation. And the most recent example of that that I can think about is uh, Lauren Smith Fields, the young 23-year-old girl who uh, dated the 37-year-old white guy. And yes, I'm using white guy because it does matter. There's no place in this world where race does not have a point or a place or a usage. Despite it being a created social construct, it is still one of the most prevalent and used constructs to manage society. And we need to get out of the idea that we're in a post-racist society because that idea is one of the reasons we're so frustrated. But anyway, okay, young 23-year-old black girl uh, seems to have been doing okay in school, was preparing to go to school to do something else extra with her life and, and all these things as, you know, it tends to be when someone, something happens to someone, everybody wants to talk about what they're going to do. I get it. Uh, you want them to be seen in the best life. I, the best life. I definitely get that. Uh, but to me, it's to me when you start doing that to a person, it's the same as when a person gets killed by the police and you start talking about they were a student. Uh, they, they they had so many scholarships and whatever. Because what you're starting to do is qualifying uh, the legitimacy of their claim that they were wrongfully killed. I don't care if it's the person that dropped out of high school. I don't care if the person has got a record. I don't care. None of those things matter if you shot him in the back. He wasn't a threat to you. Then it doesn't matter whether, you know, but we start doing that. So when someone dies at the hands of someone else, we want them to look, you know, we want the best presentation. And that comes from our experiences in this country as well. And, you know, I talk about that also in Born in Captivity. But what what will we do? So qualify them. But anyway, bottom line is this guy says he wakes up and she's laying in a puddle of her own blood uh, he calls the police and reports it the police show up and this is where the family says that uh, the police botched the investigation because they never treated this white guy as a person of interest uh, they never really grilled him they never held him to the flame uh, they sort of took his story at face value and they went on. Uh, they had their own autopsy done, still waiting on all of the, uh, they got some preliminary findings, but they're waiting on all of the full autopsy to come back. So that includes toxicology reports, which is going to be real important here because if it was something that was uh, caused by something she consumed, uh, then you still have to start asking, did she consume it voluntarily? And you have to go into all these different things that are part of the investigative process. But it's not hard to go on Twitter and put the hashtag, uh, hashtag Laura Smith Fields in and find uh, a bunch of people, predominantly black males, you know, talking about that's what she gets. This is what happens when you do this. No, you shouldn't automatically assume that because a person chose not, nah, you know me and my stand on interracial marriage. Um, what a person does individually is their business. And I've seen some great marriages that turned out great, that produced unbelievable results. And that's the reality of it. Uh, but as a general stance, that's my stand on it. Uh, I don't uh, denigrate, degrade. Matter of fact, I, like I said, I have friends that I hold very dear that are a part of it. And it's never part of a conversation because they know I love them and I know they love me and they made their choices. They don't want to have to live with it. But if I'm going to be asked the question, where do I feel about it? I don't, it's not something that I advocate. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't hate nobody. And I'm not going to tell you because you did something that your whole life is going to be horrible and because that's not what the results proved. But what I can tell you is it's not going to make your life easier just because. And... You know, it's a bunch of other things uh, that, you know, people talk about and automatically assume. And so, oh, not, not a good look, accident. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, what am I getting at? What I'm saying is outside of her posing a threat to the person who killed her. If she was actually murdered, which, you know, that's the, uh, 
assumption or that's what her family is believing that foul play was a part, you know, you know, 23 year olds can have issues and die of natural causes. Hemorrhaging is possible without uh, any type of physical, external physical trauma, you know, could be, you know, something of that nature. But the chances are, the probabilities are, you know, there's probably something that happened if there was never any indication of any congenial, uh, you know, conditions that may have been present uh, that she wasn't aware of, you know, and they'll look into all of that. If they're actually doing a full investigation, uh, the autopsy should reveal something, you know, uh, what did the blood come from? If it's an obvious external wound, then then it, it sort of says blunt, blunt, blunt force trauma of some, or some sort of trauma, whether it's a stab wound, a gunshot wound, or blunt force trauma, then obviously somebody killed her. It's a homicide. Someone other than herself killed her. Uh, if it's not that easy and it's something internal and it could be something she ingested, then that's another thing. I'm going through all of that to get to the point that if it is, if all of the assumptions that the family is making is true and that white guy did it, then he's wrong. It's that simple. You know, you know, you can't say because I don't believe in interracial relationships and she went out and tried to get with a guy. Or the other thing is she was trying to get a sugar daddy. And there were some things. This is the thing that, that got me. Somebody. And I think it was some dude, literally, and I, I may be wrong, and correct me if I'm wrong, but some dude literally took the time to go through her Facebook page after she was murdered and find four photos where she was talking about, uh, she's, you know, you know, that she's probably going to cross over and date white men because you know, she, for whatever reason, something like when I started dating white men, I I, I gave it, every, I tried or some stuff uh, like that. And then the other stuff was about sugar daddies. Okay. And, you know, when somebody says sugar daddy, you know, you know what that, you know what that means. They're looking for somebody that can take care of them and help them uh, live a lifestyle that they more than likely cannot live on their own. We have to admit, okay, that this was a part of her psyche. She's a 23 year old. I can tell you it's a bunch of 23 year olds all out there that are being fed that bull crap on Instagram. And they think that's what it is, that they're not really preparing themselves to do something for themselves. Not that you don't want a man to come along and hold you down and if he can take care of you. But I'm telling you right now, the guys that are capable of doing that and being solid are looking for sisters who are solid. It's not that we don't have the capacity to take care of you, but we're looking to build something. This is to the sisters now. We're looking to build something. You know, we we can we can take care of kids. Most of us have probably got kids and if you're like me, you got grown kids. You done did that. You done took care of somebody. And it's not that you don't want to shower somebody and love somebody. I try to do my wife as, as good as I possibly can. Uh, and one thing that I, I can be proud of is that she's living a life that she never lived before. I can say that. And I can say I play a major role in that. A, a major role in that. I can say that. But if she didn't have the solid, if she wasn't a beast in her own right, if she couldn't carry her own load, if I wasn't around, I wouldn't be, not where I'm at now. You know, I did that whole thing before. You know, I, I got it all, you just chill thing. It didn't work well for me for a number of different reasons. Uh, and I'm not gonna get into all of that. But what I'm gonna tell you is, there are a lot of young women like that. So to sit up and say, cause see, I got daughters. Now, and I'm not stupid enough as a parent to sit up and believe that everything I teach my daughters, everything I've ever said to my daughters is exactly what they're doing and saying when I'm not around. Now, if you're a parent that thinks that, shame on you. Now, you may have done a good job, and I think I did a good job, you know, all things considered. Nowhere close to being perfect. But uh, I think I did a good job in instilling uh, worth and value and how you carry yourself into my daughters. Now, again, I know what it's like. I was reared in a very strict environment. And I was, while I wasn't wilding out and doing stuff and getting arrested every two or three days, uh, when I left the house, I wasn't the same kid as I was in the house. And I was under very strict guy. I was reared by my great grandparents, for God's sakes. 
my grandmother's mama and daddy reared me. <laughs> so you can imagine, you can imagine, um, you know, how strict they were and the thing, the guidelines and the things that they set uh, for me to adhere to. And while I was there, I adhered to them. I didn't get in trouble in school. Now, I wasn't no, 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 no angel in the streets because I couldn't be. I couldn't be weak in those streets. I had to be willing to throw down. And that was my grandfather's one rule. Uh, you can get in trouble as long as you're defending yourself and you're holding your ground. Don't you ever be a bitch or a punk out there. That was my grandfather's thing. Handle your business to the end. And I don't want you spit boxing with nobody. Somebody violate you, violate them with every ounce that you have. It ain't no, well, they hit me once. You hit me, they hit you once, beat them into the ground. And that's the way I was real. That's the way I act now. I don't bother nobody, but if you ever violate me, be prepared to go the distance, because I am. And it's that simple. I, you know, you shouldn't have to, but when it comes down to this young lady and the idea that she deserved to die because she chose the white guy, or she deserved to die because she was looking for an older guy to take care of her, is absolutely absurd. Is that what you want? Our, is that what we want our young women to aspire to? Absolutely not. We want our young women to explore their minds, expand their minds, be in a place where they bring value to the table and they draw men who value them to the table and don't see them as sex objects or see them as some toy to be played with. But it's going to be imperative that we look at this from a broader scope, where is it coming from? Where is the idea that the thing to do is to get uh, get you a sugar daddy or get you somebody with a lot of loot and get paid or to pull a Brittany Rayner, not Brittany Rayner, Brittany, uh, what is her name is, the Instagram model that uh, took it to the young NBA player. I uh, can't think of her last name. Uh, it, may, may have, it is Rayner, Brittany Rayner. Okay her uh you know literally targeting athletes and she went through a few notable ones including colin kaepernick uh before she realized that the older cats weren't falling for the banana in the tailpipe literally uh they weren't falling for it you know you weren't gonna get no hole in the condom type thing going on here so she found her young buck wind him up put it on him had him all open he married her everything uh, she got a baby for him and divorced him within weeks of giving birth to the baby because she got him on lockdown for 250000 a month. She got the bag. And so now you got everybody out there thinking that's the way you get the bag. No, that is the way you could get killed. There are multitudinous uh, examples of men getting done like that or having women get pregnant and they not wanting the kid and killing them. We can go all the way back to Ray Carruth. You know, and, and and that's a common thing. And you put yourself in jeopardy when you are procreating with someone who just wanted a one night stand or procreating with someone who thinking everything is good and you're on the pill and you're not uh, thinking that the condom is good, but you just snuck and just poked a hole in the condom. Trust me, as a former athlete and then spending a great deal of my time in my latter years as an athlete and then retired working with professional athletes, um, all the way up to like age 40, just working with athletes in a number of different capacities and helping groom them and try to keep them out of trouble. I have heard every story in the book because I was also around a lot of females who were their age who gravitated towards me and would ask for, you know, uh, ask for advice on how to deal with their boyfriends. And, you know, and I would just be honest with them say, number one is those are my dudes. So I'm not telling you anything that they're doing personally, but if you ask me a question about behavior, I'm gonna tell you what you're getting. Uh, you know, your dad should have schooled you on it, your brother should have schooled you on it, but if you ask me, I'm gonna school you on it, but I'm not gonna tell you what they're doing, but I am gonna be honest with you and tell you if you're getting a certain type of behavior, what you're probably getting. Um, you know, so I know the other side, there's the nice girls who really care about these guys and just really wanna be with them. And those are the ones that tend to get hurt. And then there's those chicks that are out there talking about turkey basters and needles and condoms and 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 all kind of other stuff 
uh, to secure the bag and they own their grind. They literally going at it. They are literally professional at what they do. And no city in America, if you are a professional athlete or you know somebody, ask them, Houston is the worst place in the world. You're talking about professional gold diggers. I'm not talking about the hoochie that shows up in, 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 shows up in backstage. I'm not talking about the chick that's going to be twerking. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about chicks who have decent jobs that can afford to allow them to travel and be in the presence of high paid individuals on a regular basis. They out there literally putting it down like that. And do I agree with it? Absolutely not. I think that that's a problem. I think that if that, you know, based on what I've seen about the young lady, uh, the way she was going about it probably wasn't the best, but no, in no way does she deserve to be murdered. In no way does she deserve to be harmed in any way. Uh, now, if she was out there trying to gank people, you know, stealing credit cards, going in men's wallets and all stuff like that, I still wouldn't want to see her dead, but I would sit up and say she was living a very uh, precarious lifestyle. Uh, to sit up and just say, man, I'm tired of this type of thing. I'm going to go get me an older white guy because I hear they'll take care of you better. The truth is, older white man, uh, any type of man, if his head is not on right, is going to hurt you in more than one way. Uh, the idea that you can get a better person based on race is so, so stupid. I'm a person. I, I, The reason I am the way I am is I believe nobody can understand my experience like a black woman. Nobody can have have a, any inkling of what I'm going through on a regular basis when I leave that house like a black woman. And so nobody can understand me. Nobody can understand how I move, how I think, how I feel like a black woman. And I, I just love that. I love that there's somebody like that for me. And so, but the idea that I'm gonna go to another race and they're gonna treat me better just because they're that race, that's the stupidest thing. And, and, and black men don't act like you don't do it. You, the first thing out the mouth, you want to sit up and degrade black women and say, this is why we deal with white women. White women are the most likely to kill their mate for no damn reason at all. Do your freaking research. Now, they're not going to throw a hissy fit most of the time, and they can still clown in public. Trust me, I see it a lot. Been Being in the places that I've been, I've seen white girls spit on their they boyfriends, throw wine and, and lick on their boyfriends, throw a whole damn hissy fit in the club. I've seen it. I've seen, you know, I'm talking about uh, the wives of athletes and a bunch of other things. Uh, I've seen it all. Uh, so, but I can tell you from research and stuff, I've been studying this for about 20 years. White women are the most likely to be unprovoked in a way that you would consider a righteous provocation. Unprovoked, in an unprovoked way, kill their husband. For simple things, is I'm tired of being married to him. I want to move on, but I don't want to go through a divorce. I need the insurance money. All of that. That's extremely more likely than black women. So the idea that you're going to get more peace with a black you're going to get a whole lot of peace. You fool around to catch the right white woman. Because I'm telling you, there's a level of treachery that blows my mind. And again, it's not completely bound and restricted to race. There are some black women that are conniving and they'll get you if they catch you slipping. But normally it's going to be something you did to them. And they're going to get uh, somebody from the hood or somebody in the family to ride up on you. And then there's going to be some sad singing and flower bringing. But to just be sitting up one day and go, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be with this motherfucker no more. So... I'm gonna put some 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 antifreeze in his soda water and his Gatorade and I'm gonna kill him. My son right now will not drink. I mean, excuse me, my son right now will not eat mashed potatoes because one day I'm sitting up and I'm watching an episode like six, seven years ago, watching an episode of Snapped, and the woman talked about putting some uh, arsenic in his mashed potatoes. My 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 fourteen year old, he'll be fifteen in a little bit, will not eat mashed potatoes now because of that. But I'm just sitting up saying we have to do a better job of knowing how to address issues and being more protective of our people. We throw our people through the woods. Maybe she wasn't doing what she should have been doing. Maybe she was out of place. But you don't throw her to the woods. I guarantee they're not gonna do theirs like that. You kill one of theirs. All they're going to be talking about is hanging your ass. They don't care what, what, what that person was doing or why. You killed them. And that's all we need to be talking about is a young 23-year-old girl died. She's 23-year-old. She's still, I mean, who in the hell's making all the right decisions at 23 anyway? 
Shit, I know I wasn't. But I just had to talk about that. We got to do a better job of, you know, how we talk on one another, how we speak on one another, how we throw throw each other away so easily. On that note, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Uh, I got to run in real quick, grab something. I'm headed to the gym. So you guys have an unbelievable day.